church. How are you guys going? Everybody good? Can we just give it up for everybody joining us online in our Sulphur Springs campus? Come on. We love you guys so much. Man, I'm so grateful for all that God is doing in our community of faith. Um, you guys, last week we saw 82 people get baptized here at our church. Can we just take a moment and celebrate the goodness of God? I was telling our worship team, you know, there's a song that we sing that it says, a line of it says, the evidence is all around. And I think when you come into the house of God and you're seeing lives being changed like that and Sunday night, I don't know about you guys. I know in Silver Springs and here at Caddo that we were in a holy moment and I want to encourage you online. There's something about being in the room. There's something about being in the presence of God. There's something about being in that moment that your life is never the same. So man, I'm so grateful for all that God is doing. Well, before we jump in today's message, if you are a mom here in this place. Can you just stand on your feet? Every mom. Can we celebrate every mom right now across all of our campuses? Celebrate every mom. Stay standing. And I want to ask you this. If you're a mom believing for a child, can you stand as an act of faith with us right now? Come on. Can we give it up for those moms? Can I pray a prayer, a blessing over you? Father, I just declare a blessing on every mom. Lord, I declare that, Father, they're, uh, they're seeds and that they have sown into their kids' lives. And God, I declare that you're going to show yourself faithful to every seed that they've sown in their children's hearts. God, I declare, uh, Father, where there's a strange, uh, strained relationships, that, God, you're reconnecting them, that you're reconciling broken things. That, Father, I thank you where there's kids that have gone away, that, Father, we call them back into the house of God. Lord, we contend that all their family will serve the Lord. God, I thank you for every mom standing and she's believing God for a child. Lord, I declare that this time next year, Lord, that they will hold a promise in their arms and not just in their hearts. That Lord, we ask that you open their womb. That Father, even the ones that are believing God for adoption, Lord, we thank you for a speedy process. Lord, favor. And Father, I thank you that you just bless every woman in this house. Lord, show them the influence and the impact that they are making to so many in Jesus. Jesus name and everybody who believed it said, amen. Amen. Give it up for all the moms one more time. We love you so much, man. I'm so grateful for all the women in my life. We are going to be in Matthew chapter 15 in verses 21 through 26. And we are continuing our series, the long game. And if you're taking notes today, you can call this the mom game. <laughs> Come on, because we're mom strong. And we're to be in Matthew 15, 21 through 26. And it says, Behold, a woman who was a Canaanite from the district came out and with a loud, troublesome, urgent cry begged, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is miserably and distressingly and cruelly possessed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and implored him saying, send her away for she is crying out after us. I'm amazed how people think it's about them when it's really not about them at all. I'm amazed at how people get offended at people worshiping. It was never about you. The way I worship was never about you. The way I praise God is never about you. The way I pray never had anything to do with you. But I'm amazed how people have a propensity to make it all about them. And they, the disciples say, send her away for she is crying out after us. And he answered, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and kneeling, worshiped him and kept praying, Lord, help me. And he answered, is it not right or proper, becoming or fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs? And she said, yes, Lord, even the little pups, the little whelps eat the crumbs that fall from the young master's table. And then Jesus answered her, oh, woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you wish. And her daughter was cured from that moment. Can we pray as we continue our time together? Jesus, we just thank you. 
you that this is a God-appointed word at a God-appointed time. Father, I thank you that every ear is open and receptive. Every heart will be softened for the seed of the word of God. Father, I declare that every life will be changed, that no one will leave the same. In Jesus' name, and everybody who believed it said, amen. You know, whenever you have a child, you officially lose your name. And uh, to all the moms, you know what I'm talking about. Before, you know, it's funny how you know somebody because when you know somebody uh, before they get married, um, you always call them by their maiden name. In fact, I have a friend in Silver Springs. I still call her Amber Garrett, even though she hasn't been Amber Garrett since like the year 2000. Um, but to me, in my mind, she is still Amber Garrett, even though she's been married for 21 years. To me, in my mind, she's, that's still who she is. And, and I think about that because whenever you become a mom, you go to your kid's school and they're like, oh, you're Bear's mom. You're, you're Braley's mom. Like you no longer have an identity outside of your kids. And, and what I think is interesting here is this woman shows up in our Bible in Matthew chapter 15. We do not know her name. We know where she comes from. We know that she's a Gentile woman, but she has no identity outside of just being a woman who's where some, a place where she doesn't belong. And, and I think this is interesting because it should be noted that out of the 35 miracles that happen in the gospels, only four of them include women. And, and those are only the recorded miracles. So whenever I see a miracle happening with a woman as a woman, um, I always kind of take notice of what's happening in the text. And I think that her faith can show us something today as we gather around. The first thing I think that her faith would show us in this moment is that faith initiates. Faith initiates. I love in Ecclesiastes 11, four, it says, whoever watches the wind will not plant and whoever looks to the clouds will not reap. You know, what's interesting is this woman shows up to the place where Jesus is. In fact, in Mark chapter seven, as it's Peter's recount of what happened, it says that he went into the house hoping not to be found. In other words, Jesus, even when he thinks he's hidden, he is still easily found. It made me think about how James, when he wrote down, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. In other words, he's letting us know that God is never hard to be found. Even him thinking that he's hiding himself, he cannot be hidden. And here she is, she shows up at the place where he is, not guaranteed of a miracle, but knowing that a miracle won't happen unless she shows up. You know, I wanna encourage you today, every woman in this place, that I believe that faith initiates. Faith takes the first step. Faith decides that without reason or without logic, I don't need a guarantee, but I'm gonna show up anyway. See, here's the interesting part of the text is that the Bible does not mention where her husband was. It does not tell us where the child's father is. We do not know if he was a believer or an unbeliever. And, and I will just say this, that here at One Church, we believe that we need strong men. I, I will say that I think the biggest problem of our nation right now is fatherlessness. In the year 1950, only 5% of children were born outside of wedlock. Now it's 51% of children are born outside of wedlock. And, and I will just say this, that I believe that we need strong men that if you're a male here in the house, I wanna encourage you, your kids need you. They need you to take the lead. They need your faith. They need your prayers. But that does not mean just because your husband isn't pursuing God does not give you an excuse to sit in the back seat and not press into God for yourself. And this woman decides, I'm gonna go after Jesus for myself. And so she goes into the place where he is because faith always initiates. You know, last night, uh, my daughter and I, we heard that Joyce Meyer was going to be at Gateway in South Lake. And so uh, I've been taking Braley to Mama Joyce uh, conferences since she was four years old, like little bitty. Um, she would go to uh, listen to Joyce Meyer. I'll just say, parents, don't be afraid that your kids are having too much church. My, my daughter would go and sit through two and three day conferences, all the sessions. She wasn't in the wiggle giggle room. She was there in the presence of God at four years old, experiencing worship, experiencing the word. And, and so we're sitting there last night and uh, the place is packed and we're worshiping. I'm standing there with my daughter and uh, the song starts to play. And I just start crying. And I could tell she didn't know the words and I'm singing and she's lifting her hands in worship and we're sitting there together. And at the end of that worship set, she goes, man, mom, that one song, that was a really sweet song. 
And I couldn't even speak to her to articulate that that was the song I used to play when you were crying in the living room. Your dad would be gone at the fire department. And I would be there with these two babies. And I'm like, God, I just need your help. (laughs) And I would do what any mom would do. I'd just turn on some worship music, both kids crying, one in a swing and one in a bouncy seat. And I'm down on my knees and I'm crying out to the Lord. And I, I wanted to tell her what you were sitting in in that moment was 15 years in the making. What were you were sitting in in that moment? You were created in in that moment. You don't know that song, but that song knows you. You're, you were able to worship in that moment because your heart was responding to an atmosphere that was created years before this moment. And I want to encourage you moms that faith initiates. Faith decides that I'm going to set the tone for my home. I'm going to go after God with everything I have. I believe that men do great things in our home. I believe they're the strength of our home, but I believe the atmosphere of our homes are set by women. And I want to encourage you moms, be a mom that prays, be a mom that worships, be a mom that's initiating after the things of God. I love what Proverbs chapter 14 says. It says that a wise woman builds her house, but the foolish one tears it down. See, it's gonna take a step to get the miracle that you're believing for. It's gonna take you eventually going, you know what, I don't know what's on the other side, but I'm gonna take a step. I love when the Bible tells, talks about the children of Israel, they're about to go into the promised land and they get to the water and the Bible says that it was in flood stage. And, and the water didn't part until they took a step. Your Bible says the minute the sole of their foot hits the water, the water parts. I will just say that some of us are waiting for our situation to change before we go after God. And I want to encourage you that faith always takes the first step without knowing the next step. She showed up to Jesus and she said, you know what? I'm not going to leave until I get what I've been praying for. I'm not going to be dismissed. I'm not going to be pushed out. I'm not going to be so rejected. I'm not going to allow what the circumstance says to define what's going to happen next because faith always initiates. The next thing is faith knows what's theirs. Faith knows what's theirs. The reason why you don't defend your kids serving God is because you don't believe it's yours. The reason why you don't defend your marriage is because you don't believe having a good marriage is yours. The reason why you don't defend your health and to walk in the perfect health is because you don't believe it can be yours. See, the disciples say, send her away for she's crying out after us. See, I wanted to remind you that your calling is between you and God. It's not between the haters. It's not between the naysayers. It's not again. So it's not between you and your culture, your background, the gender you were born. I, I have people tell me all the time, you can't preach because you're a woman. Well, I'm sorry. You weren't there when God called me. You weren't there when God spoke to my heart. I, I'm so sorry that you disagree, but my calling was never between you and me. My calling is between God and me. And so if you didn't call me, you can't disqualify me. See, here's the thing is that a lot of us in that moment with the whole room set against us would have walked out. But she decided, I know what's mine and my child will be healed. She believed more in the miracle that was unseen than the rejection that was seen. And for some of you, you need to dig your heels in. It doesn't matter how your kid is acting. It doesn't matter what the circumstance looks like. Faith knows what's theirs. Faith fights for what's theirs. I I remember we were walking through a season with my daughter and, and there were some things that were happening and I was like, God, this is not the fulfillment of the promise. Uh, so some of you dream team that here in our Roy City campus, our Cattle Mills campus, you remember when we were in the elementary school and we were tearing down and setting up and I knew God had promised us a building. Come on, we have a pastor that speaks over us. We're going to have eight campuses. And I was like, Lord, we're not going to have 16 trailers for those eight campuses. And so every day when we would load in, I would begin to declare, God, this is not the fulfillment of the promise. 
Well, I know what's ours. God, you promised us a place that we can call ours. You promised us a building that is ours. And so God, I declare we may be tearing down and setting up now, but there's a building coming in Jesus' name. And I wanna encourage you, you need to lay hands on your kids and you need to declare over them. It doesn't matter that rebellion is all around you. The seed of the word is inside of your heart. I know what's yours. I know that the destiny that God's put on the inside of you. Come on, faith knows what's there. Quit surrendering your stuff to the enemy. In that moment, she could have backed down because in the natural, it didn't look good. Let's be honest. Jesus didn't even agree that she was worthy of the miracle. I I don't know about y'all, but people disagreeing is one thing, but God disagreeing? (laughs) I, I think I would have walked out. But this woman, it says that she prayed all the more. When, when things get hard, do you back down? Because the next thing I wanna tell you is that faith is persistent. Faith, faith is persistent. See, I found this, that challenge reveals what our true faith is. When, when it seems like everything is going in the opposite direction, it reveals what we really believe in the first place. See, I think there's three kinds of fake faith, if you will. The first one is inherited faith. And you see that she has inherited faith because she prays like a Jewish person. See, she says, Jesus, son of David. That's the way a Jewish person would have cried out. It's not the way a Gentile person would have cried out. If I had time to explain to you the difference, in other words, she's saying, I've heard how other people pray. So if I mock what they pray, I'll get what they got. I I wanna tell you that there comes a point in your journey where you don't need an inherited faith, you need your own faith. You need to stand on your own beliefs. It's not enough that Brian and I believe it or your campus pastors believe it or Pastor Perla believes it. You've got to get to a place where I'm not praying like you. I'm praying like me. And she's, your Bible says that she cries out, Jesus, son of David, but she feels rejection. And then she cries out, Lord, there should be a progression. Do you have inherited faith or do you have your own faith? Are you quoting Stephen Furtick more than you're quoting your Bible? Are you quoting podcast things more than you know the word? Because if you are, I wanna tell you, you don't have your own faith, you have an inherited faith. And and our faith has to come from some point from this and, and from right here. And it begins to sound like what God wants us to sound like and we're not just echoing what everybody else sounds like. Number two is I believe we have shallow faith. We believe for a little while. We believe until it gets difficult. See, uh, the Bible says that there was one who built on the rock and one who built on the sand. Notice both thought they were in obedience, but only one withstood the storm. And I wanna encourage you that, that your life is building is one thing, but are you building on the rock? How shallow is your faith? How easy is it for you to think, I just wanna quit? How, how many times can you be told no and still be standing? Number three. Conditional faith. This is where when everything's good, all the lights are green, (laughs) everything's guaranteed to be good, then I'll serve God. This is the kind of faith, well, if I wake up in the morning and feel like it, I'll go to church. Or you pray when you feel like it. Or you worship when you feel like it. Or you read your Bible when you feel like it. But what I love about this woman is that she had the kind of faith that got God's attention. That's the next point. Faith gets God's attention. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Um, Pastor Terry used to always say this, Brian's dad, faith is the currency of the kingdom. Need is not the currency of the kingdom. And if you think need is the currency of the kingdom, you get jacked up when you see need happening all around the world. Well, if God's a loving God, why are so many people dying? If God's a loving God, why are all these these bad things happening? Because faith is the currency of the kingdom. And so in other words, I've got to grow my faith if I want to influence culture with what God wants. See, there's only two people in the Bible that was said of them that they had great faith. Everybody always talks about the centurion soldier. He was told it, but also this woman. Meaning God's leveling the playing field. That great faith isn't just a boy's game or a girl's game, it's a both game. 
And, and God wants us to get to a place where we understand that it's our faith that gets God's attention. It's our faith that gets God's attention. See, I, I believe this, that a lot of times we're questioning what God's will is for our life. And, and what we're saying when we say, what is God's will for my life? We're saying, what's my vocation? And did you know that people didn't start questioning their vocation? Like, what am I called to be? What am I supposed to be until 50 years ago? With the increase of secularism, bred this meaning of people looking for meaning in the here and now. But truth, before 50 years ago, everybody lived with eternity in mind, knowing that this is a temporary place, that I'm not called to live heaven on earth. I'm called to bring heaven to earth while I'm waiting to get to heaven. I'm not trying to create heaven here and now, but all these these people always ask, what am I called to do? What am I supposed to do? Let me just tell you what you're asking for is the specific will of God. The specific will of God is your vocation. But every time in the Bible that you see God tell somebody the specific will of God, they're first doing the general will of God. And the general will of God will open up to you the specific will of God. The general, uh, the specific will of God is this. This is the general will of God. I'm sorry. The general will of God is this. Number one is giving. Hebrews 13, 16. I'm going to go really fast. Hebrews 13, 16. Everybody's called to do that. Number two is sanctification. First Thessalonians 4, 4, 3. In other words, I don't get to live my life however I want and think that God's going to show me his perfect plan for my life. You got to start doing the general will of God before you get the specific will of God. The next thing is being thankful. We sing about it today. First Thessalonians 5.18, serving is the general will of God. Ephesians 6.6, 6. reading your Bible is the general will of God for your life. Uh, this is in First Tim Timothy 4.13. Going to church is Hebrews 10.25. Baptism is the next one, and that happens in Luke 7.30. In other words, as I'm doing the general will of God, then God will open up for me the specific will of God. But what we want is God to show us the specific without the general. And we see this here in this woman because she's doing the general will of God, which is pressing into the presence of God, being faithful in a place of prayer. And when she does that, God speaks to her specific need. I wanna encourage you that as you come into the house of God and it seems like everything is broken, everything is dislocated, but yet you keep showing up, you're in your work, you're spending time in worship, you're having a thankful heart, you're being faithful in the area of the tithe, then all of a sudden it gets God's attention. And he's like, look at my kids. I can't help but move on their behalf. I can't help but begin to act for them. I can't help but begin to change that situation. I wanna encourage you that God wants to do something great in your life. It's not your need that's gonna open up the door to the miracle you want, it's your faith. And the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And so that means every time I spend time in this book, I may not remember everything I, it says, but everything inside of it is changing me. Every time I sit in a service like this, I may not remember every word that was said, but there's seeds being sown deep down within my heart that are changing my life forever. See, she in this moment, she realized that faith does not need proof. Faith does not need proof. I, I don't know about you guys, but this woman here, she is, and she's crying out, and she's believing God for her child. And just side note, while you're on your journey to get what you're believing for, you're going to have every reason to be offended. You're going to have every reason to get an attitude. I, I love Joyce Meyer said last night, I think she said 90% of our problems are caused by our bad attitude, not really the circumstance. I was like, preach that word, right? She had every reason to be offended. She had every reason to walk out, but she stayed believing. And at the end, Jesus looked at her and said, great is your faith. Your daughter has been cured. And she walked out of there believing. She didn't need to see it. His word is enough. When he spoke it, she believed in her heart that it was as good as done. I want to encourage you that in this book, we have so many scriptures 
And each one are God's word to us for our circumstance. We don't need Jesus to come down and stand before us and speak a word. He gave us pages that we can read and remind ourselves of his will for our lives, his will for our kids, his will for our families. And so faith doesn't need proof. Quit asking God to prove himself. See, I found this, that when God gives a word, there's always a miracle. When God gives a word, there's always a resurrection. When God gives a word, there's always provision. When God speaks a word, my family will serve God. When God speaks a word, everything in our city will turn around. When God speaks a word, my body is healed. When God speaks a word, the prodigal is coming back. When God speaks a word, he's building his church. When God speaks a word, revival is coming. When God speaks a word, is his word enough? Are you still looking for proof? I believe that his word is enough. And she walked out of there and nothing had changed yet. Everything had changed. It was like nothing and everything all at the same time. And I could see her as she walked in, she was broken. She was crying. But when she left, she was praising. Your Bible tells a story about a woman named Hannah and she comes down to the altar and she's praying so hard that the priest walks up to her and says, are you drunk? And she says, no, my Lord, I'm just praying for a baby. And he tells her, go home this time next year, you'll have a baby. And she went home, your Bible says, rejoicing. In other words, she didn't have proof Nothing had changed, but everything had changed. A friend of mine that goes here to this campus, she's in my community group. She was in a service like this at a Mother's Day and she had been struggling with infertility. They had done everything in the natural they knew to do. Years of an infertility journey. And she was in a service like this and my heart is always rent for the moms that are praying for a child because I remember what it was like. I remember how hard it was one Mother's Day And they used to give flowers out at Brian's dad's church to all the moms and the moms would come down. And as they were walking down, it was a reminder that that's not me. We had been praying, believing God for a baby. And I felt so forgotten by God. And so we were, I've always prayed for moms believing for a child on Mother's Day. And several years ago, we had a service like this and I was praying and I felt compelled as I do every Mother's Day to pray, declare that God's opening the womb. And you know, that mom, she not only conceived her first child and had her, but this Mother's Day, she's conceived a second child and she's about to have her as well. And I say that to say, she's told me, she said recently, she said, you know what's funny? Is whenever you prayed that prayer, I felt something on the inside say things are gonna be different. And she said, I knew that I knew that that was the day that everything was gonna change. She didn't need proof, she just believed. And there's something that happens on the inside of us when deep calls out to deep. You know when we sing that song and we say, oh, oh, oh. That's not just something we had to throw in there to fill in a spot. You know what's happening in that moment? It's the deep part of you crying out to the deep part of God. And sometimes we don't even know the prayer to pray. We don't even know how to articulate the words, but there's something that happens when the deep part of us cries out to the deep part of God. And all of a sudden God begins to answer back. And that's what happened to this woman. And that's what happened to my friend, Christina, is in a moment they were sitting in a service and they heard of the word of the Lord and they declared, God, I don't even need proof. I know you're faithful. I don't even need to see anything change. Nothing can change, but yet everything has changed. Mark 11, 24 says, therefore I say to you, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. As we close our time together today, I wanna ask you a question. What are you believing for? Is this word enough? Can you believe even when the symptoms are screaming in your face? Can you believe when the financial report is screaming in your face? Can you believe when the child is still away? Can you believe right now that his word is enough? Because true faith doesn't need proof. Can I pray for you right where you're at? Jesus, we just thank you for who you are. Holy Spirit, I thank you for miracle stories being written right now. 
every person online, every person in Silver Springs, every person here at our Cattle Mills campus, God, that you see every situation, you see every circumstance, God, you know every need. And Father, I thank you that they are gonna leave this place believing they've received what they prayed for. That Lord, I declare that you're faithful to all your promises, that you're good to keep your word. Father, I thank you that your word says that you watch over your word to perform it. And so Father, I thank you, God, for miracles being written in this place. Miracle stories. Lord, I thank you that we're not gonna have an inherited faith, a shallow faith or conditional faith, but God, we're gonna have the kind of faith that gets your attention, a deep faith, a withstanding faith. We thank you for it in Jesus' name, amen. If you're hearing the sound of my voice and you might say, Crystal, I don't know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I've never asked him into my heart, into my life. I wanna encourage you today. That's the best first step you can make. That people may have quit on you, people may have walked out on you, but God's never quit or walked out on you. If you're hearing the sound of my voice, I wanna ask you a question, do you know Jesus? Not do you know church? Not how many times have you read your Bible? But do you know Jesus? Maybe you're here and you used to know him, but honestly, you've been away for a long time. Can I invite you back into relationship with him today? If you're hearing the sound of my voice, whether you're in Sulphur Springs or you're online, if you'd like to pray this prayer with us, that you wanna accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or maybe you wanna give your life anew to him, with every head bowed, every eye closed, will you lift your hand on the count of three? And we'd love to pray for you right where you're at. One, two, three. Lift your hand in this place. Everybody online, everybody across our campuses, let's pray this prayer together as a church family. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Take my sins and by your grace, I take your righteousness. I make you the Lord of my life. I give you all that I am. I hold nothing back in Jesus name. And everybody who believed it said, amen. Can we give it up for every person who just prayed that prayer? So awesome. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, can you do us a favor? Text the keyword decided to 903-634-7135. That's decided to 903-634-7135. We believe that this is your first step, but it's not your last step in your faith journey. Also, I mentioned uh, moms believing for children and uh, scriptures for your children. If we have resources in our mother's area um, that we'd love for you to be able to pick up, it's a book, uh, Supernatural Childbirth. It's the book I read when I was believing God to conceive a child. And then we also have a book called uh, Praying Circles Around Your Kids. So if you don't have those resources, you can stop by there. If you're online and you'd like one of those resources, if you would, please just drop your email uh, down below in the comment section and our team will get in touch with you and do our best to get that resource sent to you. So with all that said, amen. You have a great Mother's Day. What a fantastic word that was. We're going to close our time with just a, a, a quick prayer. I, w- I want to lift up every prayer request that was submitted throughout the week online. Every single week, we have prayer requests uh, that come in. Uh, they vary from uh, financial needs to physical needs to uh, to us praying for different family members. But we take every single one of those prayer requests serious, and we pray for every single one of those as a team. Uh, so if you ha- ever have a prayer need, you can submit it at iamonechurch.com slash pray. And you, and you can know this, we will pray for it. But can we lift up every prayer need as a church family together that came in online? Maybe you're watching, you have a prayer need right now. Uh, I believe even in this moment, if you just extend it to Jesus in faith, uh, uh, God will hear and God will move uh, on your behalf. But Father God, right now, we lift up every prayer need that came in online. Father God, right now, we even lift up every prayer need for everyone tuning in. Whatever the need is, Right now, we just extend it to you in faith. We release it to you. We give it to you, Jesus. Uh, We let it out of our control, and we give it to the Almighty. Uh, So, Father God, right now, as we give it to you in faith, we know this. You are faithful. So we know this, uh, God, that that you are sending the answer. You're sending the solution. You're opening doors on our behalf. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everyone said, amen, amen. Hey, if this message encouraged you, uh, please uh, hit the share button. Uh, Share this with someone. Share this with a loved one, a co-worker, uh, a family member. But hit the share button. And you can uh, remember this. You can always worship with your giving at iamonechurch.com slash give.